Hello and welcome back to this series on Python for the purposes of DH. And this is the revised version in which we have the zoomed in uh, code and zoomed in text and output. So let's just jump right in. In the last few videos, we've been looking at kind of data like strings, integers, tuples, and data structures like lists or sets, uh, dictionaries, and uh, tuples. And in this video, we're going to start doing more complex coding. And we're going to start off where most tutorials kind of start off when they start addressing kind of more complex coding, and that is with uh, branching statements, or as they're also known, conditional statements. And a conditional statement exists in every single coding language. It is the backbone of any program. Uh, what you do in a conditional, conditional statement is you say that if the Python script encounters something, then do something else. This is how programs fundamentally work. A bunch of if-then statements. It's a little bit more complex than that, but that's the gist. So let's just kind of jump right in and talk about how to formulate a conditional statement in Python. So the way in which we're going to do that, so let's just make a very basic example. We're going to have an object. This is going to be called name. We're going to make that equal to, let's just say, Ross. And you're going to notice a friend's theme throughout this video, I think. So we've got a name named Ross. What if I wanted to check and see if the object name was in fact Ross? How would I do that? Well, I'd make a conditional statement. And this is how I do it in Python. I say if name, so if whatever I want to check, if name equals, and here I'm doing a double equal sign. There's a couple different ways we can structure this, but for right now, we're going to just do that. And if I want to say is equal to Ross, then, and this is how you form a uh, then in Python, use a colon, and you hit enter, and this is important. This is your first experience with indentation. In a lot of programming languages, like JavaScript, etc., indentation, C, indentation isn't necessary. The way in which you uh, embed layers of code is through uh, squiggly brackets and other methods. But in Python, and uh, indentation is absolutely necessary. In other programming languages, you do it just so that it looks nicer and is easier to read. But if you don't indent when you have a colon, you're going to return an error. And I'll show you that right now. So let's say in this indentation, we're going to say what we want to see happen if this condition, this conditional, is met. So let's just say something simple like print found. Or yes, why not? It doesn't matter what it is. And we see the output that it prints yes. What would happen if I did not indent? Oh, boom, there you go. You get an indentational error. And this is telling you that you need to indent. Now, how can you indent? Well, you can use tab, and it works. There's other methods, uh, but you need to delineate in some way, shape, or form that this is a different set of code. And as you can tell here, I've just used a space. And there's a whole debate in the uh, coding community is if you should use the spaces or indents or triple spaces and uh, an indent. Um, I'm an indent person myself, so that's what I do. So what is happening here? What's happening here in the background? Well, What's happening is the Python script is running, and it is saying if this object is equal to Ross, and if that statement, this is actually what's happening in the background, we're getting a boolean if that statement is true. Remember, we met the boolean object before, uh, type of data, which is a true or false piece of data. So if this boolean is true, then move on and do this. If it's not, nothing's going to happen. How can we control it if it's actually false. Well, if it's false, we can say something like, if we want it to be false, we can do something like, uh, here, we can just say, it's not Ross. And then you'll see nothing happens. Remember, this is how you say not equal to, an exclamation mark and an equal sign. Use that operator. And we can see that if name is not equal to Ross, then it print yes. And the reason why yes is not being printed off is because this is equal to Ross. We can say Cindy, and you'll see now that it does say that. But let's stick with this object as Ross. 
how would we check to see if something else was named? Well, we can use what is known as else, and we're going to structure it like this. So if this is not Ross, then print yes, and or else, so if or, if it's not this case, so if I'm doing a double negative now, if this statement is not true, then do something else. And we can print off no. And as you can tell, it's going to go through and print off no. Let's stick with this being Ross for right now. It's a little easier than working with two negatives. So if the name is equal to Ross, then print yes, else print no. Let's change this to Monica. And we see no actually happening here. And this is how else works. Now, else is simply saying, if this is not true, then perform this other task. So we can do a bunch of different things with that. This is a very simple example. But one of the more common ways in which you're going to use conditional statements in a DH project is oftentimes checking to see if something is in a list. So let's make a list of friends characters. We're going to just say Monica. Oh, make a list. That's my bad. There we go. Uh, Monica, Rachel. I think that's how you spell Phoebe. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, Chandler. I think that's how you spell Chandler. Joey. And you guessed it. Us. You know what? Just for fun, we're going to put Janice in there as well, because why not? Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to start working with this object here, friends, and which is a list of all the main friends characters and probably the most annoying character in all of friends or any sitcom show, Janice. So what we're going to do here is we're going to see if someone is in this list. How do you do that? Well, we're going to use uh, what are known as operators here. We're going to use certain operators that exist in Python to check and see if something is kind of doing something. So we're going to check and see if Ross n friends. And we can say print yes. And as you can see, what's happened here is it's gone through and it's checked to see if in fact Ross is in this long list. Now, what if I wanted to check and see if there are multiple people in this list? Well, there's two ways to do this. I'm going to show you the uh, probably incorrect way first, and then I'm going to show you a much better way to kind of check and see if two people are in a list or two things are in a list. So here's one way. We can use the and operator. So if Ross and friends and let's just say Monica and friends then print off yes. Okay. What if I wanted to see if, uh, let's just say, who is in another? Gunther. Why not? Let's do that. We're going to see no. Why is no happening? Well, let's work with the logic right here, because this is important in conditional statements, working through that logic. If Ross is in friends and Gunther is in friends, then print yes. What's happening here is Gunther is not in this list here, and so therefore it is moving to the else statement and printing off no. So what if I changed Gunther to Joey? We can see that once again it goes back to working. What if I wanted to check to see just if either of these individuals was in friends? Well, I could do this as one option and it would turn back yes, or I can do something like this. Well, let me explain what's happening here. Or is another operator. So it's just like English, if Ross is in friends or Gunther is in friends, then print yes. And this is what makes Python kind of nice. It's almost when you're using these operators, almost like you're just writing almost a pseudocode, which is pseudocode is, I'm gonna spell this out. It's a term you're going to hear probably from a lot of people. Pseudocode is when you write something that's not real code. It's just your normal everyday speak so that you can kind of get a sense of the logic that you want to work through. And then you go through and translate that to and uh, into some kind of actual programming language. So if Ross is in Friends and uh, Gunther is in Friends, then do this 
If not, then do this. That's an example of pseudocode. And then that kind of translates into what we have here. Uh, instead of do this, it would say print yes and print no. Uh, but pretty much that's what pseudocode is. But what's interesting about Python is that when you need to structure logic, you're kind of writing in modern English syntax. But one of the things you might make a mistake of is adding that and right over here. I'm going to change this up a little bit. We're going to get rid of that. So if I were to try to say if Ross and Gunther and friends, it's going to print back this and say no. And why is that happening? Well, let's look and see what happens if I change this to Monica. And we have yes. So this is another way you can kind of check to see if two items are in a list. Add the operator and put them right next to each other just like this. So instead of having to write this out, if Ross is in friends and Monica is in friends, you can just put the operator right in the middle and you can say if Ross and Monica in friends, and you can do this as much as you like. And Joey, oh, there we go, print yes. And we can say also something like this, Gunther, and you'll see that you're going to now get a no because what's happening is it's going through and checking to see if all of these conditions are met. Now, there is one better way that we can do this. And we can use what is known as a subset. So I'm gonna put that over here. I wasn't planning on talking about that in this video, but I'm gonna do it anyway. So if set, and what a set is, a set is a, um, is simply uh, a list that doesn't contain any duplicates. So if set, we're going to say Ross, Joey, Monica. We're going to get rid of this. And we're going to say is subset. And we're going to open up a parenthesis. And we need to add a dot here because it's modifying this. So if set, this set of characters, is a subset of this list. And if that statement is true, then print off yes. And we've got mm, one argument. What did I do? Oh, there we go. That's why. <laughs> yes, there we go. There's another way I could have done this. I could have just uh, created a set manually by just doing that if I wanted to. I wasn't thinking, and as you can tell, most programming mistakes are the result of just not thinking. So uh, if this set is a subset of friends, and uh, if you go back in the video and look and see what was happening, uh, I was being an idiot, and I was trying to just use a, uh, a three separate objects that weren't actually in a data structure that is a set. Uh, to actually just check and see if that was a subset, which kind of broke Python. So anyways, this is how you can do this much more cleanly and probably much more Pythonically. So that's a word you're going to hear me say a lot, Pythonic. So the Pythonic way to do something is the correct way to do it in Python, the more standard way. Now, there's a lot of different ways, as you can tell, to solve that problem. But this is the way that most of the people in the Python community would probably do uh, use to solve it because it looks like cleaner code. So that's what's happening here in an if else statement. But we can also layer if statements. We can do this a couple different ways. So the first way is we can say, if that statement is true, then print yes. Or if we can say elif, which is else if. So if that statement's not true, then check to see if simply Ross in friends. Oh. Elif, Ross in friends, print Elif, just so you can kind of see what's happening. So we are seeing that the Elif is not being printed off, even though Ross is in friends. Why? Well, the reason why is as soon as this condition is met, this Elif is being ignored. So let's try something else. Let's uh, change Monica to Gunther. 
And now this statement is false because all three of these people, the set is not in friend or in the friends object. And so it's not printing off yes. So it's going down to the next line of code and looking to see what that says. And this says, well, if that's not true, then see if this is true. Elif Ross is in friends, print Elif. And because this is true, we're not getting to this. Let's say we wanted to just see if Gunther was in friends. And that logic is now going to break. And it's going to go down to this final statement, simply else. Now, this was a very short introduction to conditional statements or branching, as it's known in Python. Really, in other languages, you're just going to call them if-then statements. But this is the technical term, conditional statements. And this is how they work on a very rudimentary level. I highly encourage you to spend time getting used to these basic syntaxes. Figure out how to make basic statements. And if you go over to pythonhumanities.com, you'll find that I have not only kind of these videos here for you to work with, but I've also got some exercises for you to do. And if you go down to interacting with data, part three, you'll see lesson number eight, conditional statements. And you can scroll down. You can read all this stuff. You can see what we've been talking about. And then you can go down to a coding ex exercise, or like the last few videos, we'll have a series of tasks for you to do to try to get you familiar with, uh, with conditional statements. And I'm going to be throwing some things at you that I didn't really cover in this video. But if you spend time, you think about the logic, you think about what you learned in the past video, like equal to, less than, etc., you can really play around with integers, any kind of data, and any kind of data structure like a list, and try to work through that logic and see if you can figure out how to solve these problems. And if you get stuck, there's a cheat sheet. So don't worry, there is a way to figure it out and check yourself. But play with conditional statements, get used to them because they are going to be fundamental in every single thing that you do. And you're going to see that when you write code, you're not just going to have a statement that looks like this. This is oftentimes going to be embedded in a loop, which we're going to cover in the next video. And oftentimes you're going to have layered or nested conditional statements. So if this is true, and if this is true, and if this is true, then do this. So that's going to be it for this video. Thank you for listening. And please do like and subscribe down below. And hopefully you found this interesting and we'll be moving on into loops in the next video. Thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe down below and visit us at pythonhumanities.com.